Hello everybody and welcome to another video. We are back today here in London, one of our favorite cities in the entire world. And we decided to check out one of the most iconic markets here in London, and that is Greenwich Market. Whenever we come to London, we love going to food markets because there's so many of them. And I feel like whenever you come here, you can't even go to all of them. We're going obviously to Greenwich Market, but we're gonna see a couple more. We're probably gonna revisit Borough Market and gonna eat a bunch of food as always. So there were so many different types of food in that market. They had ramen burgers, pulled pork wraps, falafel. They had some traditional British food as well. But one thing that caught our eye was this Jamaican beef patty spot. Because in London, apparently, I think 4% of the population is Jamaican. There's a lot of people from the Caribbean in London in general. So I decided this would be the perfect snack to start our trip with. So I've definitely had Jamaican beef patties before. I kind of grew up with them. They were more so a frozen aisle kind of thing, but this stand had a couple different varieties. They had salt fish, which is definitely very typical in the Caribbean and Jamaica. They also had the traditional one, which is beef, but I decided to go for jerk chicken because I love jerk chicken. Let's see how this is. She pulled it fresh out of the oven, so it's super hot. Mmm, mmm, it's real good. That's friggin' amazing. Ani was a little bit worried that it would be dry, but it's really not. The jerk chicken spices really shine through. It's a little bit spicy. It's got like a graviness to it, so the meat is really good. It's surprisingly delicious. I didn't think it would be this good as well. 100% better than the frozen ones that I used to get growing up. You definitely need to try this. I wanna, I wanna see if you're gonna like this, because it's really, really good. Mm. It's very peppery, I think. Uh, is that the jerk chicken spice? I don't know. I don't really taste any chicken. I feel like there could be more chicken in this. I think like Brandon took a big chunk out of it, but now there's only like kind of sauce, but the crust is really good and the sauce is really good, but I like lots and lots of filling. When you come to Greenwich Market, you can also see the ship right here called Kadisak. It is the last surviving clipper ship, I think, and used to bring things like tea and other foods and wool, apparently, from Australia and Shanghai and places like that. And it was the fastest one at its time, kind of like the Blue Nose in Canada, I guess, maybe. It's a museum, so you can actually go inside, but we don't have time for that. But it looks amazing. It's Really huge, it looks like this old, big pirate ship. So definitely check it out. And next to the Kadi Sark ship, there's actually also a little street food market. It's called the Kadi Sark Street Food Market. <laughs> that it only has a few stalls. I think it's only open seasonal though. But if you come to Greenwich Market, you should also check out that one. So there's also a little vintage market section where everyone's selling jewelry, candles, clothes. It's kind of like a flea market and yeah, super cute. If you want some trinkets or stuff, you should come here, but now you can't see us. Reminds me of Berlin. Yeah. Greenwich Market was established in 1737, but apparently there's history that leads back to the 1400s and it has over 48 food stalls and a bunch of other stalls. And there's also a bunch of shops around, um, iconic restaurants and so much to explore here. This market in the Greenwich area in general is freaking amazing. I didn't really know what to expect. We've never been to this region before. We've never been to this part of the city, but it's really cool. When you first get here, it looks like almost like a traditional English village. And then you go in further and then you see what all the fuss is about with this area because it's super cool. I really like the vibe of the market. There's also, of course, the vintage part of the market. There's so many different areas to have different foods, and especially in the market itself, the Greenwich Market, there's so many different options. So I would like to spend more time here. We don't have too much time to explore, but it's definitely an area that I would love to come back to. So a couple of stands actually have some samples, and I got some Brazilian chorro. I don't know what makes it Brazilian. Me either, but I guess dulce de leche. 
better than the Spanish one? How dare you? Because they're a bit more like the American ones that actually have uh, sugar and cinnamon. The Mexican ones? Yeah, that's what I meant. The Mexican ones. Mm -hmm. Delicious. So when you get to the Thames in Greenwich, there's the Greenwich foot tunnel that goes under the Thames and it's 370 meters long and was opened in 1902. And we're gonna go through it. Yeah, you can also get a Uber boat to the other side, which we were gonna do, but it's Head like- to the other side, it goes down the Thames. Down the Thames, but yeah. it's like nine pounds a person. So we were like, mm, I don't think so. But we're gonna take the subway. Yeah, because we're poor. Apparently 4,000 people go through here every day. And now we're under the river. Any moment, the waves can come through the walls and drown us. I'm pretty sure that's not gonna happen, but it'd be like Titanic. It'd be like, Rose, Rose. I'm gonna let you drown too. Excuse me? We came to Box Park, which is apparently the first pop-up mall, or at least that's what it was opened as, about 13 years ago. And it was only supposed to be open for a few months, but it's still open. And they've actually opened a few more in London, where at the Shoreditch location, which was the first one. They're opening one in London, and apparently they're planning to open more in the world, in other countries. And it's this really cool place made out of shipping containers. So every shipping container is like a different little shop. And since we're in Shoreditch, which is like a super cool area, there's a lot of like vintage and um, food stuff, food stands, clothing jewelry places. stores, like all like artsy. Pretty hipster. Places, yeah. And you can have drinks as well. Right now at night, apparently you have to show your ID and register. And yeah, you have to use a QR code, scan it, and then bring your ID and all the stuff. And there's a big line. And we were going to go up and have drinks, but now we're not so sure because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort to just go in and have a drink. And it's a bit too clubby at the moment, yeah, I think. Yeah, like we... boom, 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 pounding club music inside. Not really our jam, typically. But... Yeah, I think we got, came here too late. I think if you come during the day, it's a bit more of like a food hall kind of Beer market street. Vibes. Yeah, street food, beer market kind of vibe. So I think you should check it out. We've walked past here many times in the past and wanted to check it out. It's pretty cool. We came to After School Cookie Club, which is apparently the first vegan cookie bakery in London. And I got the Cookie Monster, which is cookie dough. And I chose peanut butter and jam, like flavor. And it came with ice cream, which is nut based because it's a vegan place. And then you get half a cookie on top and I chose the maple pecan cookie. So this sounds delicious. I actually came here for the cookie dough. I didn't know they had ice cream as well. And she put jam on top, nuts and chocolate shavings. Mm. Mm. The ice cream tastes like marzipan. Because no. <laughs> it's almond. I thought it was just like almond milk base or whatever but it actually tastes like almonds, so that's delicious. But I didn't get any of the cookie dough. Let me try the cookie. Mm. It tastes like coconut on the outside, and I can see it. It's really crispy, but gooey on the inside. I don't know if I even taste maple though. But this is really delicious, especially because it's a vegan cookie and you never know with vegan stuff sometimes. Let me get some cookie dough though. I don't know if this really tastes like cookie dough to me. More like a, like a raw bar, you know? Like the, the nut kind of bars that I love eating. You're not selling me on any of this. Raw bars, <laughs> marzipan. Sounds like something for you, definitely not for me. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a nut paste because it's peanut butter flavored. It's delicious. This is really good. And a really good alternative to like normal ice cream, I feel like. Yum, if you have a sweet tooth, come here. The cookie tastes like a dry, oatmeal cookie. It's not bad. It tastes good, but it's a little bit dry. It's okay. <laughs> Hello. Hi. 
Hello, this is the second day in London. Yesterday we arrived a bit too late and I guess when you're having fun, time goes really fast or what is it? Time flies when you're having fun and we couldn't get a lot into our first day. So now it's our second day. We just got out of our hotel. Speaking of our hotel, we are staying at the Travel Lodge, which is a super budget hotel, but we often stay there and I don't know, I think Everyone in the UK knows the Travel Lodge, but if you're foreign, you might not. It's a very no frills hotel, but they're the same pretty much everywhere in the UK, so you always know what you're getting. And we've noticed that they're cheaper than other hotels in London. Now we're gonna go to Borough Market, explore a little bit, check out an attraction, and then later on tonight, we actually have a show to attend, which is the reason why we're in London. So let's get this day started. So we came to Borough Market, which is one of our favorite markets in London. We were here already in the past, but I feel like you always have to come back here. It dates back to the 12th century. So it's one of the oldest markets in London and one of the biggest ones. It has all these food stalls, fresh fish, fresh fruit, but also street food stalls. And we're excited to try some stuff here. I got a sample of vegan mushroom pate and the guy said that no animals were harmed producing this. Mm. Tastes really mushroomy. Very good. We actually came here because we're here for something specific that we're actually going to try in another video. Maybe there's a little bit of a hint behind me. But we're also really excited to just explore this market again. As Ani said, it's one of our favorites and see if we can find some more tasty treats. Something really cool about Borough Market is that apparently this was a filming location for Harry Potter. I think the Leaky Cauldron was here, which is awesome. But I guess when you come to London, everything kind of looks like Harry Potter, so pretty cool. And all these stalls, they have all these free samples, which is really cool. So you can walk around and try a bunch of things. I had some ale, chutney, and some cheese, which was both delicious. They even have a stand that has durian, but a box is 23 pounds, which is insane. It's still not cheap in Malaysia or Thailand, but like 25 pounds, that's insane. For like a box of And it's probably not even that good because it didn't even smell. And I feel like in Asia, when you walk around and you see durian, you don't need to see it. You can smell it from far away. <laughs> and here it didn't smell, so it's probably not as ripe, fresh, I don't know. Potent. Potent. So if you're going to come to Borough Market, maybe don't come on a Sunday because it's absolutely insane. When did we come here last time? It was a weekday, right? And it was yeah. not nearly as crazy. Now there's like massive crowds. Saturday's probably the same. But also don't come on a Monday because it's closed. Yeah, that would be a big disappointment. We walked past a stand that smelled and looked amazing. I don't even know if it has a name. It just said wild mushroom risotto. It looks amazing. We got truffle oil on top and they have all these fresh mushrooms that they put on top with a bunch of Parmesan cheese and what is it, green onions or like these herbs? I don't know, chives, I, I, chives yeah. I know the German name, Schnittlauch. Anyway, let me dig in. And I love mushrooms. These look so meaty and delicious and so cheesy. Wow, super yummy, super mushroomy. If you love mushrooms, you're gonna love this. I was literally drooling watching Ani eat this. I'm salivating right now because it smells so good. That truffle oil smell is phenomenal. Mm. Oh my God. I don't see how this could be more flavorful. This is so good. It's got that strong earthiness from the mushroom. Of course, you really taste that truffle oil. There's a little bit of saltiness from this cheese. I don't know if it's like Parmesan or like Pecorino or something like that. Yeah, it's got a, a peppery taste to it as well. It's definitely worth it. 
it was 850 for just the risotto and then it was 250 pound extra to add truffle oil but i think that it's worth it it adds a whole nother dimension to it this is amazing it's a good portion mm -hmm. Although this place is really trendy and we saw a lot of other people do it, we passed it and we decided that we couldn't pass up on these donuts. So these are from Bread Ahead. And apparently this place is a school and they opened 10 years ago. The creator wanted to teach people that anybody could bake and make fresh bread. And so now they have all these different kinds of breads, all these different desserts, croissants, and of course these donuts. Now they had all kinds of different flavors and we didn't really know what to choose. They had one with honeycomb, they had pistachio, praline, but Anya asked the guy what was the best flavor, and he said either pistachio or cheesecake. So we got blackcurrant cheesecake, and it looks really good. It's so soft. Mmm. Mm. That is delicious. We love donuts. We have them in our Budapest video. I think the best donut we've ever had was in Poland, but this, this is pretty close. This is pretty delicious. The cheesecake on top is really soft, sweet. There's this sweet, tart blackcurrant jam as well. It gets all over my fingers are super messy, but it's really, really delicious. It's all inside too, it's fine. And blackcurrant is quite a British flavor, actually. I feel like um, we don't really use blackcurrant stuff in Germany, right? I don't know. This looks a lot more to me like a Berliner than like uh, the average like, American donut. Mm. Are you blown away by the donut? It's very good. The inside, the cheesecake flavor uh, or filling is kind of like custardy. And you can see that there's custard as well, I think. It's mixed with custard. The donut's very fluffy. I really like the sugar. On the outside, I feel like it's not just normal sugar. I don't know, but maybe it's the jam. Good recommendation from the guy. Whenever I come to London, I have to get fudge. And since at Boar Market they have pick and mix, so you can just choose your flavors and stuff. I had to get a bag. Bailey's flavor. Fudge is so good. There are not many foods that I dislike in this world, but one thing that I do not like at all is licorice, and especially salted licorice. And this fudge stand had a salted licorice fudge, of all things. We've had salted licorice in places like Finland and Sweden, and I absolutely hate it. Maybe it will be a little bit better in um, fudge form, but I have the... Especially for you. Yeah, this tiniest piece. We took this little tiny thing. Give it to the public. And this is the problem. Honestly, it's not terrible in fudge form, honestly. Best black licorice kind of flavor thing I've ever had. And that's saying a lot because I absolutely hate black licorice, but in fudge form, somehow it's not so bad. We're in the old operating theater and Herb Garrett. I don't know what the Herb Garrett is. Apparently this is in the attic of a church. It's a museum about medicine and surgery and it looks pretty cool. And I think you can obviously also see the an old operating theater. This place was built in the 17th century and there's all sorts of old tools, old displays, anatomical statues and of course, maybe if you've watched our other videos you know that I love that kind of stuff. It's creepy, it's weird, but it's also educational at the same time. So if you want to even bring your kids here, you could do that. Yeah, they have there a is a kid here. Table. Yeah, which maybe we'll do. <laughs> Apparently, up until 1847, there was no anesthetic, and they had to amputate within minutes, and they just gave alcohol and opiates. Sounds fun. Sounds like a party. This is a self-guided tour, basically, and you can find these stations where you scratch the points off when you get to them. And I am Elizabeth Reagan, and Brandon is James Smith. I'm a patient and he's a porter. 
which is, that's pretty cool and fun. Apparently this was mostly for poor people because um, rich people were operated on at home. So this is where you would have come to. That'd be, that'd be the poor one that just has to have the opiates and the alcohol. It's okay. Imagine being a student here and watching corpses being chopped up over here. I mean, people do that today, but the knowledge is completely different. They would experiment and do all these things that now you would never do 100 years, 200 years later. But it's pretty cool to be in a spot like this because, you know, I'm not going to be any sort of brain surgeon, that's for sure. So you would have been one of those people? I would have been on the table. So because they had to learn on the bodies, apparently there was a resurgence of body snatchers who were burying up bodies and then brought them here. And if your body was unclaimed after 48 hours and you died here, then they were just going to cut you up and study you. And apparently there was all, over a hundred something bodies unclaimed. How many people do you think got murdered just so they could be sold? Probably at least some. Maybe it's a business idea. Not anymore. <laughs> We are now at Chapel Market, which is open six days a week and sells fresh fruit, fish and vegetables and a bunch of home goods and clothes. Carpets, and knickknacks. And I was wondering, what's your favorite market in London? Do you have a favorite? Yeah, there's so many. Maybe a secret one that's not Borough Market or Camden Market where people normally don't go to. Leave it in the comments. It is day three, our final day here in London. We had an amazing time last night at the Bridge City Cine Show. Joe Black from RuPaul's Drag Race UK also was an opener for the Bridge City Centers, which was kind of random, but it was super cool to see that. The show was amazing, but we also ran low on time. We were too busy running around, filming two videos at once. So we didn't really get to do everything we wanted to do, but that's just another reason to come back to London in the future. This is the end of our video. It's going to be another one from the UK, so stay tuned. But for now, make sure to subscribe, like, comment, all that jazz. See you in the next one. Bye.